Reporting son las seis y buenas noches y bienvenidos y bienvenidas. ¿Cómo están ustedes hoy? Mm, sí, sí, bien. Bien. ¿Están bien? Sí, sí, quizás. Sí. Quizás, uh, mm, quizás haga buen tiempo mañana, mañana, hoy, eh, no tanto. Uh, pero bueno, vamos a practicar a la lista de cosas que vamos a practicar. Vamos a practicar con, primero con gustar. We're going to finish that, you know, hangnail, that tail end of the gustar part of the uh, uh, file from last week that we didn't do. We're going to take a look at the past, how it's different, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, gustar. <laughs> Segundo, segundo, a ah, conectores. Uh -huh. Conectores. Uh, vamos a ver si ustedes, si ustedes tienen preguntas del vídeo, de la historia, de la obsesión con las rubias. We'll see if we have any questions about what, what he meant with the funny story. And, uh, and we are going to talk about conectores. And, and actually, the idea, uh, it is related in a way to this thing of using the two verbs together that we started winter session with. The idea of using two verbs together is we can take this one thing that we know how to use, this one verb, very common, use it all the time, and stick on just another verb. And then we want to always be able to add more information. And the conectores idea allows us to add extra information, okay? And we'll talk about why that's important and what to look for in that because you have to think about the conectores thing kind of strategically, strategically and real realistically and have a game plan with conectores, okay? So uh, we'll talk about how to look at that. Uh, we'll practice it a little and I'm actually gonna show you what I'm gonna want you to prep for next week. Because conectores will, for the most part, not be an easy thing to use speaking just off the top of your head. Conectores won't be the kind of add-on, like adding on a, a verb, a second verb, an infinitive, and an infinitivo, uh, infinitivo. And it will not be like you can just fly by your seat of your pants and grab something out of nowhere and get an example okay uh you're going to need some time this week to think about it so we'll show you how to approach that um and i, I will have a list uh hay una lista de palabras uh oh i hope we have time for a fun video did i i, I did not give you guys yet the uh fun video about the uh, how to be a real man no no, no. Ah. okay hopefully we get time for that uh if we don't Remind me so I don't forget about it. Vale, bueno. Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con, con. La idea de dos verbos. Y vamos a practicar todos juntos, okay? Uh, we're going to practice all together with this. Wait, ¿dónde está el momentito? Vale. Bueno, aquí, aquí. Here we have this little hangnail. And we I left gustar for the end because gustar is, of course, a special verb. Okay, gustar is not, in some ways it's easier, to be honest. In some ways, it's a little harder. Okay, it's a double-edged sword, gustar. Um, here is how gustar is different from volver a, how it's different from acabar de. How it is different from ir a infinitivo. You can pair up a second verb with gustar, just like all those other ones. But of course, we don't conjugate gustar for yo, tú, nosotros. Yeah. Okay. So it's different from those other verbs. Uh, voy, uh, um, ir, voy, vas, va, vamos, van. En el pasado, iba. Iba a estudiar. Íbamos a ir de compras. Um, uh, uh, 
ellos iban a hablar con, uh, con sus suegros, con sus vecinos, okay? Uh, it's not like those other verbs where we use all the conjugations. You can use gustar for the yo, you can use gustar in the tú, but then it's like the, hey, baby, come online in a bar. So don't do that, yeah, because un unless you want to meet some new hacha hacha hot person in the bar, okay, <laughs> then go for it. But, you know, otherwise don't do that. Okay, so when we're talking about using two verbs together, there's actually, here's the easy part, gustar can only be used in that one conjugation if we pair it with a verb, right? So, you know, generally we have gusta or gustan. The thing that is pleasing is what we conjugate the verb for. Well, when the thing that is pleasing is an activity, infinitivo, the infinitive, you can only use gusta. That's the only choice you got. And who likes it? to whom it is pleasing, that's the little pronoun part in front of it, right? Either me, if I like something, te, if you like something, le, if one person or usted likes something, uh, uh, nos, if we like to do something, and les, if they or ustedes like to do something. Okay, so we're going to pair up one of those little pronouns, me, te, le, nos les con gusta y un infinitivo, okay? Fácil, okay, un ejemplo. This one you can pull off the top of your head. I could use a different pull it out of, but we won't do that. <laughs> pull it out of the top of your head. Uh, por ejemplo, en presente, solamente presente. Mm -hmm. Mi ejemplo es, me gusta, uh, me gusta, hmm. Me gusta jugar con las mascotas. I like playing with the pets. Fácil, ¿no? Sí. Me gusta, me gusta uh, hablar y escuchar español. Mm -hmm. Otro ejemplo, muy rápidamente por, porque es fácil. This is the easy stuff that you learn like forever, mm -hmm. right? Me gusta jugar con uh, mis nietos. Eh, pan, sí, fantástico. Bueno, sí, Susana. Um, me gusta hacer ejercicio en las mañanas, uh, in the morning. Uh, 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 por la mañana. Por la. Por la mañana. Sí, por lo general. Por la mañana. Sí, sí, bien. Ok, otro ejemplo. ¿Listo? Uh -huh. Um, I did. I said, what did I say? Me gusta comer el chocolate. Sí. Ah. <laughs> ah. So. Sí, eso es. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah, eso es. Okay. Bueno, sí, Jan. Ah, uh, uh, me, me gusta caminar por la playa. Por, oh, sí. Me gusta caminar sí. por la playa. Ah. Sí, sí, okay. Vale, sí. Tenemos arena, pero no es playa. <laughs> Tenemos arena, mucha arena en Arizona, pero no es playa. Ah, um, bueno, ok. Pero hoy, hoy, mi esposo y yo um, están en Newport Beach, California. En... Oh, ah, no. perfecto. Hoy. ¿Y qué es... tiempo hace en, en Newport Beach? ¿Qué tiempo ah, hace? Ah, ah um, ayer uh, mucho sol. Um, um, uh, hoy, hoy. How long have we been here? No, didn't you ask me the weather? Sí, 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 claro. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah. Well, I thought you were talking about how long. No, um, uh, yeah, hoy, hoy, um, sol y nublando, cloudy. Está nublado, pero hace sol. Ooh. Yeah, sí. Hoy. Hoy aquí, aquí no, aquí, hoy no hacía sol, ¿verdad? Mm. Uh, generalmente sí, pero hoy no. Ah, oh, sí, sí. Y playas, claro. Sí, sí. Hay playas, ok. Pero, bueno, entienden, gustar con infinitivo es fácil, ¿no? Sí. Es sí. fácil, ok. Bueno, 
Uh, y es el nivel, aquí tenemos el nivel un poquito más complicado. Here we have just a little higher level of difficulty. Si hablamos de liked, L-I-K-E-D en inglés, liked, no es like. Yeah? Um, tenemos que pensar un poquito en todo el concepto, en todo el concepto. You still only need one type of verb because you're still pairing it up with a second infinitive, right? But if you want to say liked instead of like, we have to think about how do you mean liked? See, uh, si la idea es un hábito en el pasado, entonces solamente gustaba, gustaba. You're talking about a habit. ¿Por qué? Porque un hábito, un hábito indica que la acción repite mucho o repetía mucho, ¿verdad? Uh, si hablamos de un hábito, es algo que pasaba muchas, muchas veces. Y yo no sé, yo no sé exactamente cuántas veces. Muchas veces, pero mm. el número, ah, no lo sé. Ok. Un ejemplo aquí sería, ¿cómo? Cuando ah. era niña, when I was a kid, cuando era niña, me gustaba patinar en el hielo. I used to like ice skating. Mm. Pero, ah, es used to like. ¿Sí? Ah. Uh, y patinaba en hielo muchísimas veces. Por años y años. Y no sé eh, el número. Ah, ah, no sé cuántas veces yo patinaba. Ah, en inglés se dice, I liked skating when I was little. O, I used to like to skate. Yo creo, yo creo que es más común decir, I skated a lot. I liked to skate. A veces I used to, pero la idea general es used to. Entonces, gustaba, solamente gustaba. Ok, pero me gustaba con infinitivo, nos gustaba con infinitivo, les gustaba con infinitivo, le gustaba con infinitivo. Así, ok. ¿Tienen ustedes un ejemplo? Oh, Cindy, tienes pregunta primero. O oh, ejemplo. Sí. I'm, I, while working on this, have the problem of distinguishing. Because every time I used ABBA, I used to, I want to say, why, don't, why, why am I not just saying I liked? Not I used to like. Because some of the sentences, even in Duolingo, I find convoluted. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the expression in English used to. You know, my, my husband used to work on his dad's farm. Uh, I used to sell electronic components. But a lot of times we just kind of throw out that used to and we say, exactly. I, I did that. Okay. Yeah. We use the idea of used to, Cindy, because... First of all, it exists. And second of all, it's the really, it's one of the very few things in English that you can hang on to that creates in your mind the idea of did it a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Not just liked, but liked for a long time. And I have no idea how long. Okay. We, we have We have just past tense, and then we have that used to. So the used to exists to show you why we need imperfecto. Okay, the reason you see it so much in Duolingo is that it's the it's one of the few good ways of expressing the same idea of imperfecto in English. It's one of the few English things you can take and relate it to the Spanish structure. Because in Spanish, it's not quite as simple as saying liked. It depends on if it was one time that it happened 
or a bunch of times over and over again. And you use two different verbs to convey those two different ideas. Now, we may not use that phrase used to in conversation very much. You probably don't when you speak with people in English, but it's it gives you a means to hang on to, to say, here's when. Is that what you mean? Is that the idea you're conferring of repetition? And if so, then we need gustara. Does that answer your question? Kind of, sort of? Yeah, yeah. It, it's just hard to get used to using it because I always think that yeah. really, so, it's wrong. It's so wrong. here are the two, the only two things in English that come close to that I, the idea of imperfect in Spanish. They are used to and was doing. I was walking along when a meteor fell out of the sky, I don't know. yeah, <laughs> right? Was uh -huh. walking along would have to be imperfecto. And then something happened that interrupted that walk. Okay. Uh, used to walk in the park every day. It's the only thing we have to hang on into English to tell people why we need imperfecto. We don't have that dichotomy. We use other words to convey that idea, but the words we use in English don't always translate into a verb form. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try using used to without a second kind of idea. You know, unless you just answer, I used to, okay. But yeah, used to always needs another activity so that you know what it is we're talking about. Used okay. to drive, used to like, used to watch, used to sing. We need another second verb, yeah? Used to by itself doesn't have a whole lot of meaning except to tell you it's over, but it happened probably a lot, probably repeatedly. See, si, Julie. You could just say, uh, me gustaba tocar el piano. Exacto. Me gustaba tocar el piano. Perfecto. Me gustaba uh, uh, tocar el piano. But you would never say me gustaba. Uh, uh, me gustaba tocar el piano ayer. No. Gustaba does mean liked. But me gustaba yeah. tocar el piano, pero ahora no. Uh, sí, por ejemplo... A mi hija le gustaba tocar el piano uh, cuando tenía 10 años. Pero ahora no. no lo hace. But now she doesn't do it. Así. Bien? Okay. Sí, Jody. Oh, and you need to take yourself off of mute. It should be a little button hanging out yeah. at the bottom. Ah, okay. So uh, just another question regarding this with sí, sí. respect to preterito then, do you usually use it with a time marker? Like ayer, anoche, you know. Um, you can, but it might go solo without that. Okay. It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. It may very well happen, but it definitely indicates a very different and a very final idea as opposed to me gustaba, okay? okay. So we're gonna get a couple of gustaba uh, examples before we tackle that preterito. Si, sí, Karen. Uh, cuando era joven, me gustaba jugar en la nieve. Okay, bien. Bien, vale. Otro ejemplo, con gustaba. Hay otro, Jody, sí. Cuando estaba en la universidad, me gustaba montar mi bicicleta. Sí, montar en bicicleta, muy popular, muy popular, especialmente con los universitarios, con los estudiantes de la universidad. Perfecto, sí. Uh, otro ejemplo, un, un ejemplo mío, mi es, ah, mi esposo, 
a mi esposo le gustaba correr en maratones mm. cuando tenía 20 años. Mm -hmm. uh, sí, antes de lastimarse en un accidente, que es otra historia. Ok, vale. Uh, sí, bien. Ahora, ahora, sí, le gusta, ahora le gusta correr, pero no puede correr. Uh, sí, porque uh, se rompió los huesos del pie y el tobillo en un accidente de escalar montañas. Y, y aunque, aunque sí le gustaba mucho correr, ya no, ya no puede. ¿Ok? Vale. Bueno, otro ejemplo. Con Gustava. Solamente Gustava, Federico. A uh, mí Gustava y yo en el desierto. Ok, bien, bien. Uh, muy bien. Otro ejemplo. Sí, Pat. Uh, me gustaba visitar a mi abuela porque, see if I get this word right, horneábamos gelatos juntos. Ah, uh, we used to cook. Bake. We used to put cookies together. Cookies, yeah, sí. Horneábamos, you would yeah. put them. Sí, una idea, uh, sí, así. Uh, como, por ejemplo, me gustaba pasar un rato con mi abuela porque ella horneaba galletas. Ella horneaba galletas para mí y para mis hermanas. Así que me gustaba pasar un rato con mi abuelita. Normal, ¿no? Ok. Bien. Cuando mis niños, cuando mis hijos, cuando, mejor, uh, mejor dicho, cuando mis hijos tenían cinco años, uh, me gustaba uh, jugar con los Legos, con los niños. ¿Eh? Bien. Así. Ok. ¿Alguna pregunta o no? Yeah, pregunta. Bien, dime. Uh, like my example, you know, saying I used to like rain uh, in the desert, is does that imply um, absolutely excluding rain? In other words, if I said I used to like to rain in the desert, does that mean, uh, without saying it, does that mean, eh, but I really don't like it now? Me gusta a uh... It indicates liked it, and it happened probably a bunch of times. But to the exclusion of today? For today, you would use presente. Uh-huh. Todavía, todavía me gusta. I still like it. Yeah, if you wanted to say that you still liked it, I think you have to add that. Because y, otherwise it does sound like, hey, I used to do this. Y, y, toda, y, sí, y todavía me gusta. And I still like it. Yeah. It, it does uh -huh. make it sound like, it definitely makes it sound like used to. And used to makes it sound like maybe not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm getting, a lot me gusta. Of, I'm getting a lot of echoes when people I, talk. I am too. I, don't yeah, know I, I am or... too. And yeah, we even have this at home. I mean, we're on a, we're actually on a newer computer now. Sí, hay, hay un eco y no entiendo hmm. por qué. I don't usually get that. So I just wondered no. where it was coming from Por lo general, no. It's uh, coming. Maybe I am every pretty week. sure it is not my mic. We it. had this last week too. Mm -hmm. Sí. Y no hmm. sé por qué. I do not know why. I did not have this kind of echo this morning. So I'm pretty sure it's not my equipment. So maybe it's one of our, how, how can we figure it? Yeah, it, it might Everybody be something going on with my Wi-Fi. I'm not sure. No, should we, should we all mute if we aren't yeah. talking? Unless we're talking. Quizás, quizás, sí. Bien. Yeah. 
Try that. Okay. Mam sí. Intentamos. Uh, mejor. Aún mejor. Oh, mucho mejor. Es mucho mejor. Ok. Uh, un poquito, pero no tanto. Ok. Vale. Bueno. Road to New Year's. Uh, entonces, vamos a, a seguir con la idea de cuál es la diferencia entre me gustaba y me gustó. Me gustaba, me gustó. Ok. Y es una diferencia muy importante. Me gustaba indica un hábito, algo que pasaba varias veces, muchas veces en el pasado, no sé cuántas veces, uh, uh, pero gustó indica una reacción después de la acción. Gustaba es liked, gustó también. Es liked. Pero hay una difer diferencia, ¿ok? Uh, voy a darles un ejemplo. I would say that gusto is, in this case, maybe a little less common, but it does happen. So I'm going to show you. And you need to know the whole context. Ok. A ver. Uh, gusto, and it will only be gusto if we pair it up with an action with an infinitivo. Gusto happens when you want to indicate a reaction to that activity of having done something. Okay, por ejemplo, mi ejemplo aquí es, es me gustó ver la, la peli, peli es película. This is a kind of a slang shortcut for película. Me gustó ver la peli Barbie. Bien. Ah, con mi hija. Ah, ah, voy a añadir información. Ok, fíjense, fíjense. Pay attention. Me gustó ver la peli Barbie con mi uh, hija. Aunque, aunque, la verdad, to be honest, la verdad, no me gustaba Barbie, uh, la muñeca. Uh, ¿Cuál es la diferencia? I liked watching the Barbie movie, although, to be honest, I didn't like the Barbie Hadal much. Hay gran diferencia. There's a big difference in that. No me gustó, uh, or me gustó ver la peli Barbie. Hmm. Es la idea al fin de ver la película. This tells you that, oh, I watched it. I did it this many times. Yeah. And After I turned it off and got all done with it, I walked away, and this was my reaction. I liked watching it, although I didn't like Barbie much. And we've got liked and didn't like. Okay, one's a negative, but but they're very different, and we need two different verbs to express that idea. Okay, question. Okay. Uh, Gustava, if, I, if you use it there... I didn't used to like Barbie, as opposed to I didn't like her. Why, again, it makes more sense to me to say I didn't like her as I didn't like the Barbie doll instead of used to. You didn't do that over and over again. Ah, uh, but you probably never took a Barbie and played with it once, put it away and never looked at it again, unless you hated it, right? <laughs> When little kids get a toy and they like it, do they count how many times they play with the toy? No. The so, used to, Cindy, is just there as a vehicle to signal to you, uh-oh, I need gustada. But in English, you're likely to really say that in English as, I liked watching Barbie. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to change this, tweak this just a little bit more. Oh, God. 
I'm going to tweak this just a little more. So I've got two double verbs set up in each one. So it's kind of apples to apples. Okay. Me gustó ver la peli Barbie con mi hija, aunque la verdad no me gustó. Uh, uh, no me gustaba jugar con Barbie la muñeca. In English, in English, I would probably say, I liked watching the Barbie movie with my daughter, but to be honest, uh, I didn't like playing with Barbie, the doll. And it's just liked and didn't like. It's still liked. You're right. In English, it's still liked. And the Gustava. But the used to gives you something to hang on to, to know that that, Mm -hmm. Is it possible to say that idea used to like, and does that convey the idea of something in my past that wasn't like a one-off? I, I think because your childhood went on for some time when you didn't like playing with Barbie, that it makes sense to use the imperfect. Yeah. So uh, you probably see used to a lot if you do Duolingo, right, Cindy? Uh, yeah, a fair amount, a fair amount. Yeah. So they, they do that just to give you something to hang on to. Mm. So it's a signal to you. It's a little red flag. Okay. Um, pregunta? Sí. Oh, perdón. Sí. And because you say, no me gustaba, you're referring to the past as opposed to if you were a kid saying this, no me gusta jugar. I don't, I don't like playing with it now. Yeah. Well, you know, even a kid could say that if they're, if they're 12, they no longer do that, but they used mm -hmm. to when they were eight. Yeah. You know, it's all context. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, I liked doing this, but I didn't like doing this. This didn't like has to go into imperfecto. Mm -hmm. I couldn't put them both in preterito and be, have it really create that picture. This, when you're talking to somebody, creates literally a picture in their mind that I just turned off the TV or maybe last week. I watched this streaming or maybe maybe uh, a month ago, I went into the movie theater, yeah, and sat down and watched it. That first me gusto clearly tells somebody this happened one time. It's how she felt when she walked out of the movie or turned off the streaming service or, you know, lo que sea, whatever it might be. Yeah. Whereas that second, no me gustaba, clearly is talking about something long ago because of my age, because of, yeah. Does that not help at all, Cindy? Si o no? I, I think I just have to, I don't know, maybe practice it because it, it looks to me like it, you could do the same thing using me gusto. No me gusto but, jugar con Barbie. No, you couldn't do that because uh, uh, that's really talking about way back. Playing with Barbie towels, look at this face. Playing with Barbie towels, if I say no me gusto, see, I, I couldn't say no me gusto jugar con Barbie. That would indicate like there was a one time thing, but I'm really talking about like childhood long ago. And, and playing is something that people did repeatedly in the past, if you're talking about your childhood, yeah? And nobody counts how many times for something like that. Let me try to get maybe another example. But that, but clearly, clearly, Cindy, what I, the one thing I want to point out, I couldn't make both of these verbs both me gustó. I couldn't. That second me gustó uh -huh. would carry a one-off, one time and done idea. Okay. And clearly look at the face. <laughs> Not talking about one time and done <laughs> with that second half. Because that second half is talking about back in the childhood. Yeah. Okay. Otro ejemplo, another idea, okay? 
para ilustrar otro ejemplo. Y, y voy a engrandecer esto un poquito más. Bien, ok, vale. Por ejemplo, let's maybe not dig back into infancy, but something more recent. Ah, uh, cuando tenía, cuando tenía 25 años, me gustaba salir, uh, me gustaba salir con mis amigos uh, para bailar. ¿Sí? Cuando tenía, cinco, uh, uh, ve, cuando tenía uh, 25 años, me gustaba salir con mis amigos para bailar. When I was 25-ish, yeah. Uh, I used to like going out with, with my friends. To dance. Ok, normal. Uh, is, is there something, though, about pegging it to an exact age? Uh, that no, makes it... it's still... It's still something... Did I go out dancing with my friends one time when I was 25 and I've tracked all that? Mm. No. Even though I say when I was 25... Uh, you know, let's be more vague. You said in my 20s let's or something more like vague. that would be more general, yeah. Cuando tenía unos 20 años. When I was in my 20s. Okay, so let's be more vague. But it would be the same if I said 25, by the way. Because okay. I know, even though that's one year out of my life, I guarantee you, I went out to the bars a lot more than one night of my life at 25. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. well, I just thought I just thought that when you specify a time exact, you know, like this year or whatever, that it changed the way you used it. So even if I you know what, even if I pegged a year, even if I pegged it to a year, which wouldn't be a very natural thing to say, because nobody mm -hmm. talks about their 20s or their or if you're talking about your teenage years, nobody nobody counts that up. It's gotta be countable pegged as a specific number of times to be a preterito thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, bien. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Marilyn. So if you said on my 25th birthday, oh, then you would use credit, right? Es otra cosa. Pero, pero, but, you know, uh, 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 you probably and talk about the past it would sound a little unnatural to say my 20 it wouldn't be unnatural to say on my 25th birthday i went out to but not i used to yeah but not i used to yeah so uh, I'm or not i liked on, I, on my not... 25th birthday i liked going out to, mm, yeah and not 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 uh that there's something there's a clumsy feel about that yeah. But if you use the 25th birthday date, then that puts whatever verb in your If I talk about my 25th birthday, I'm talking about a specific right. day okay. that happened. And, uh, uh, you know, it is possible that there could be something imperfecto in there if I did description. Okay. But if I'm talking about what I did, that's going to be one day out of my life, one time. Probably a lot of preterito, okay? Um, otro ejemplo. Um, Question. Oh. Sí, 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 dime. Would this be appropriate to say? This is what I thought my sentence would be. Nos um, gusto viajar a Amsterdam el verano pasado. Perfecto. That's okay to use gusto there. Perfecto. Perfecto. Uh, porque estás hablando de un viaje en un momento del pasado. Así que es perfecto. Ok. Uh, un ejemplo aquí. Uh, cuando tenía unos 20 años, me gustaba salir con mis amigos. Uh, 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 no me gustó, pero, pero es otra cosa o expresa. Otra idea muy diferente cuando digo no me gustó 
salir al bar in Old Town. Soy anciana. I'm an old lady. No me gustó salir al bar in New Town. Uh, porque... Hmm, uh, estaba... Estaba muy uh, ruidoso. I didn't like going out to the bar because it was really noisy. That sentence conveys something very, very different. It talks about one, a one-off, a one-time thing. No me gustó salir. They're both two verb combos. They both mm -hmm. mean liked or did like, did not like. See? Mm -hmm. uh, sí. Me gustaba salir. This tells you, ooh, happened a bunch of times. Yeah, you like, you had a good time all those times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one tells you a one-off. And I add some information because I'm old and decrepit with the loud bands. <laughs> yeah. Didn't those loud bands sound great when you were in your 20s? And then you get older and the loud bands are like, uh, yeah. I used to make so much fun of my parents. Oh, this band is so loud. You know, I had a cousin's wedding. Oh, this band is so loud. <laughs> <laughs> you old people. Yeah, now I'm one of those old people. Okay. No me gustó salir al bar en Newtown porque estaba muy ruidoso. Bien? Sí? Mm -hmm. Does it have a tiny, a tiny bit, Cindy? Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, quizás, okay, sus ejemplos, your examples. Gustó, o gustaba, lo que sea, whatever it might be. Sus ejemplos, your examples. Otros ejemplos. The, the gusto is going to be a much more specific. Bueno, Jody, sí. Uh, nos gustó visitar el Museo de Arte ayer. Exacto. And you're talking about something you did on that one day. Oh, we liked. And, you know, if somebody walked up to you with a microphone for the local news, and they say, hey, how'd you like that, that museo? Right? Because they're, they're doing a review of the new, uh, new, new exhibit that's opening. Ah, me gustó mucho. Yeah. Think of me gustó mucho as this. You walk out of the premiere of the movie and the guy walks up to you with the, con el micrófono. Con el micrófono. Y dice, y te dice, ah, te gustó. Did you like it? La reacción, your reaction, right? Your first impression. Ah, sí me gustó. I liked it. ¿Sí? Okay. Bien. You know how I had that explained to me when I was 16 years old? Well, it's a reaction. You ought to know that. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> no examples. That's a reaction. You ought to know that by now. It's in the book. <laughs> eh, okay. Vale. Uh, ah, pero el ejemplo aquí de, de uh, nos gustó, nos gustó viajar nos. a boom, 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 un lugar, you know. Uh, we liked traveling to whatever place because you're talking about one trip. Okay. okay. Es posible decir... Es posible decir, nos gustaba viajar, nos gustaba viajar, uh, viajar por todo el mundo. We, we used to like, but it's really that used to again. We liked traveling all over the world means automatically it creates in the mind of the person you're talking to. Ooh, this happened a bunch of times. They did it a bunch of times because they really had a good time doing it. This creates the idea of, oh, it was a once, it was a one time. It was a one time thing. Mm -hmm. And and how you felt about it. Mejor? A little better? Un poquito mejor? Sí, sí. es mejor. Es, es buen ejemplo. Es buen ejemplo. Uh, um, o, o otro ejemplo. Ah. Uh, Otro ejemplo. Um, uh, y el contexto aquí es muy importante. Uh, 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 aquí hay uh, otro ejemplo. Um, 
a mi sobrino uh, uh, le gustó esquiar uh, en las montañas. Uh -huh. uh, cuando cuando uh, uh, cuando visitó a uh, Colorado okay. and this tells me he had a good time doing that but he just went there and did that in that place once es otra idea decir a mi sobrino uh, le gustaba Esquiar. Mucho. He liked skiing a lot, but it automatically creates in the mind of the person you're speaking to a, a picture of, ooh, did it a bunch of times. Enjoyed it I over and over that, and over again. Yeah, he used to like skiing a lot. Mm -hmm. But you're likely in English to just say he liked skiing a lot. Yeah. You're likely to express it that way. Often it's expressed as used to, to give you the idea of over and over and over again. Or he, he always liked skiing a lot. He always liked skiing a lot. Sí. Siempre. Siempre. But you know what? A lot of times we leave that always out. Mm -hmm. Oh, he liked skiing. And they might not say always, but that's what they, yeah, it's it's implied, but not said not voiced that way yeah see but in spanish you don't even have to say the siempre this le gusta esquiar says maybe even siempre yeah okay muchas veces muchísimas veces okay see un poquito mejor a little better it's mejor um es mejor bueno me gusta Okay, vale. Uh, eh, sí, es, es algo importante. It is something that is important to uh, uh, note that difference because we really don't have good things. In, in, we, we have to like extra add on little words to get the nuances. And you don't have to worry about the nuances in Spanish. You just use the one form of the verb or the other past tense form of the verb and it kind of paints that picture automatically okay a ver bueno uh, pam 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 aquí vamos here we go alguna pregunta o no debemos uh, seguir should we move on to the next thing sí sí la, okay el próximo tema el próximo tema el próximo tema es es Esta idea de conectores. Again, we're going to see how we add on words. Okay? We add on words. ¿Hay alguna pregunta? Uh, admittedly, this was a very silly story. Uh, es una historia bastante tonta. Uh, this, by the way, of having this story be kind of ridiculously uh, uh, magnified and silly is a purposeful way uh, it's a purpose, purposefully. Yeah, it is, it is a teaching method and it is done intentionally uh, with learning through storytelling. The weirder the story is, the more people go, boo, that is odd. And the better, the, uh, the better, the boring grammar ease sinks in. Uh, oddly enough, they've actually done research on this, so trust me. Uh, okay, vale. Um, ¿Hay alguna parte de la historia de las rubias que ustedes no entendieron? Is there any part of that story that you didn't understand? Any little odd phrase? Just the fun story part. I didn't understand the phrase de ru ruedo. De nuevo? No, ruedo. Did, didn't he use that? No. One of his conectores was, uh, oh, de hecho, de hecho. Oh, de hecho. Sí. De hecho es como, in fact, as a matter of fact. 
hecho comes from hacer, oddly enough. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's the, hecho, the hecho is a way of saying, as a matter of fact, or truly, uh, uh, there's not a good, super clean translation. Actually, I've got a list of these for you. Uh, pero, uh, uh, and we're going to take a look at those in a minute, en un minuto, see? ¿sí? What I want to grab on with you now is, was there any part of the story, silly as it was, that didn't make sense to you, or some turn of phrase or anything, vocabulario, algo, something that's not a conector, but just the story itself. Did you understand the gist of what it was and the details of what it was? See, sí, Jan. I think I got the gist of it, but there's something I wrote down, uh, me quede trom trauma, I can't remember. Traumatita traumatizado. Yeah, and Kedar? Yeah, see. I mean, wouldn't I was thinking it would be it made me feel so and then it left me word? traumatized. <laughs> oh, it left me traumatized. Oh, left it left me traumatized. I was traumatized. Ah. In English, sería como decir I was traumatized. It mm -hmm. left it left me traumatized. It left me. So that's yeah. why they're using Kedar, because that's the part that is over. stay, but Kedar is often used uh um uh Kedar se un poquito diferente, see? Kedar se is often used uh with the way the state somebody is left in after uh uh oh kind of a, a, a dramatic event. Mm. Uh, and often it's used to talk about something not great. Mm -hmm. um, se quedó ciego. He was left blind, mm -hmm. you know, by the accident. He was left, you know, uh, with this infirmity. And now he's talking about, you know, a mental, an emotional wound. Mm -hmm. so, there's, so there's Kedar and then Kedar Se. Kedar Se. Oh, me quedé, okay. me, I... me, quedé, me quedé traumatizado. I was left traumatized. I was scarred for life. Oh. <laughs> I was scarred for life. So that was me quedé. Me quedé. Me quedé traumatizado. Was traumatized. Yeah. It left me scarred for life. You can look at it that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and by the way, well, many years ago. <laughs> this may have changed. Oh my gosh. I did travel to Spain one year with a friend of mine from college who was blonde. And oh my gosh, we were so harassed and it wasn't because of me. <laughs> we were Really, I, we were followed everywhere because she was blonde. I, I don't know if this is, this is probably not the same anymore, but it, it used to be like that. We literally had an entire battalion of, of soldiers. I kid you not following us like screaming from the fences and uh, screaming la rubia la rubia like you know 50 times and and she freaked out big time uh uh okay. now it probably wouldn't happen quite that way but you do get a lot of attention if you're very blonde mm -hmm. it used to be kind of uh like <laughs> very off-putting uh okay it was for her at least Mm -hmm. vale. uh, Pero la historia, sí, ah, bueno, sí, Patricia. I don't remember where this was. I think it was towards the end. They used something like forma adecuada, AD. Adecuada, adecuada es adequate, it's... sufficient. Oh, adequate. Oh, okay. kind of like good enough. Okay. okay, I guess I didn't find that. Okay. Good enough. Adequado or adequada would mean adequate, good enough. Okay. Yeah, that normal means... range. But it okay. doesn't I... say either really great or really lousy. It's just adequado. The other question I have is, I think I was understanding. He was saying like, por cierto, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to tell the gospel truth. Eso yeah. es. I understand okay. that, right? So what, here's what we want to look at. 
because what you what I'm going to want you to practice is going to be something that is here's the part where you can't take it off the top of your head like you know ooh uh, me gusta manejar un carro deportivo me gusta escuchar música uh, rock yeah no it's not the thing you can just pull out of the top of your head this conectores thing is commonly used but uh, uh, there's going to be a way I want you to think about it. I want you to kind of focus first. Oops, and I think I need to make sure I've got the sound on because I did not do that. Hmm. Ah, see, sí. aquí, okay, vale, mejor, mejor. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what he says about conectores. This is where he interrupts in the middle of the story about bottled blondes. Interrupción, perdón por la interrupción. Pero quería, quería deciros algo. No sé si os habéis dado cuenta de que, bueno, claro, I don't know if you guys realize, los, los conectores tienen funciones diferentes. ¿vale? Connectors have different kinds of functions, meaning they indicate different kinds of ideas, but we always use them to add on extra information. ¿vale? Okay. Cada uno se usa mm, con un determinado fin. Uh, each one is used with a definite uh, endpoint a definite goal in mind. Okay. So this is going to kind of put a fine point on how I want you to think about conectores once we listen. Eh, to hay algunos que se usan, por ejemplo, para, para añadir información. Some are used to add information. O para, para dar alguna explicación. O para Some are used to give an explanation. Justificar algo. Some are used to justify something. Like tell why. O quizás, quizás para, para hablar de las consecuencias. Or maybe to talk about consequences. Oh, that happened. This happened first, and because of this action, Eso. that was a consequence. It, it, it followed up from that first event. Okay. What happened after event number one? de algo que hemos hecho antes o para en fin para concluir o you know all in all to conclude to wrap it all up to wrap things up and sum it up para concluir para dar un resumen final o quizás incluso yeah. para ordenar ¿eh? para ordenar ah or maybe to put things in order Maybe to give you a time reference for things happening one after another. And this conector thing is not, you know, strictly, you know, a grammar thing like noun, verb. They're just groups of words that indicate a general idea. They'll talk about consequence, what order things happened in, a reason, an explanation, something like, but they all are a little bit different. Okay. Ordenar una serie de hechos en primer lugar, después, luego, okay. first, later, luego then. más tarde, al final, ¿vale? En fin, los conectores tienen funciones diferentes y es importante, es muy importante usarlos correctamente porque... It's important to use them correctly, so you do need to know what they mean. If you use it in the wrong sense, if you just throw it in because you think it's a conector and you can connect two little ideas together. If they don't make sense, it'll be a ha huh? moment. Okay. Si no los usas correctamente, si usas un conector que normalmente se usa para dar una explicación, ¿vale? Lo usas para hablar de las consecuencias, entonces puede ser un poco confuso. ¿vale? Okay, so you can confuse somebody if you use it incorrectly. And that por cierto thing is an issue. Ah, eh? Eh, por ejemplo, up. mira, por ejemplo, hay un conector que suele causar muchos problemas, que es por cierto. Por... Here's the one. You think you know it. You know, I tell you, don't look things up. <laughs> See if you can guess some kind. But you know, you say, I, I got this one. Cierto means by itself. Cierto, true, correct. True. Right, yeah. Ah, cierto, es cierto. Ah, es cierto. That's true. Es verdad. It's the same thing as es verdad, right? Mm -hmm. es so you, you hear por cierto and you say, hmm, 
hmm, for true. Oh, it must mean something like for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We have a saying for sure. What it can be for? Yeah, I got this one. It must mean for sure. It does not. Por cierto. <laughs> eh, por cierto, muchos estudiantes piensan que por cierto eh, significa um, que algo es verdad, porque they, they often think that that means something is correct, right, true. Cierto, okay. cierto significa verdad. Pero no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <ríe> no tiene no. nada que ver con eso. Por cierto, se usa para eh, meter, meter una información para mencionar algo que es secundario. Que... Por cierto, does something you totally don't expect it to do. I cannot tell you why, but it just does. So just you have to accept it. That's what it is. Por cierto is like saying, oh, by the way, you know, you were talking about one thing and then like suddenly, you know how that bulb goes off in your brain and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell them about. Ba -ba -ba -ba. But that second topic has nothing to do with this main thing. You say, oh, by the way, forgot to tell you, we have to do this. Okay. Now, let's get back to the main topic. That's what por cierto does. It just adds some different information. It's it's kind of secondary or, uh, uh, you know, not necessarily pertinent or vital to the main bit of information you're telling, but you need to add that little thing on, even if it's not super related, and then you can get back to the original topic. See, yeah? that's the only thing that por cierto does, okay? so. His point there is that connectores have a job of uh, 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 adding information, summing up information, telling what order things happen in. They serve many functions and you need to know which functions they are. So we're gonna take a look at some of these because I gave you a helpful list and I've added two things on because actually helpfully in my morning session, some people asked about a word and I put it on this list, although I, I'm sure if you know if you look it up in a dictionary, it will not say connector or connector, but it actually functions in this way to add on information. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, I added some things onto the list and they are time related words that I added on. So uh, some of these will make sense and some of them will not. You're going to see some in bold. The ones you see in bold are going to be the ones you're going to come back with next week with ideas to practice. So here's what I, how I want you to look at conectores. I want you to look at conectores because it's kind of, wasn't that a, a whole big slew of words? It was a big glob. Are you going to remember all those and memorize them? Of course you're not. And if you can, I pat you on the back. You wonderful, mensa, super smart person. Okay, I'm not that smart. Here's how I want you to look at conectores. Uh, it is not the kind of thing you can grab off the top of your head and just use it, use it, use it, like, you know, me gusta. Uh, it is the kind of thing that you need to hear many, many examples and you need to practice many examples, okay? And you need to purposefully practice examples. So what I want you to do is to notice what they mean, because what they mean tells us about the kind of context we can use them in, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. I want you to notice a lot. Don't put yourself under the pressure of, I must be able to use all these perfectly off the top of my head, because that's not a realistic way of learning conectores. What is realistic is get to know what a lot of them mean and start watching out for them in writing and in listening. In writing will mean these little articles. Uh, anything, you know, written stories, newspaper articles, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you listen to any kind of podcasts that tell a story or that talk about news, even if you listen to the weather forecast in Spanish, any kind of TV broadcast, try to work hard at noticing when these are used in, you know, TV, movies, and writing. Because, you know, they're used for very long sentences to connect two ideas and relate them to each other. Put less pressure on yourself to be able to pull it out of your behind and just give an example. But we do want you to ponder this week certain ones of these that are super common 
right? The, the most common ones, I do want you to think about them and bring some examples in. So we're going to take a look at what some of them are. You're not going to be able to use all of them next week. You are going to use about maybe six or seven of these next week. Okay. Uh, bien. Okay. Uh, así que. Uh, así que. And it has to be. And a lot of these are more than one word combination. Así que. So that. So. So that. So, so that, okay? Entonces, what, ah, then, so this doesn't have a whole lot of meaning, this word, entonces. It can strictly be kind of be talking about time, but you know, how many times do you say so? What does so mean in English, by the way? What does so <laughs> mean? Give me a def, who, I'm, again, pat you on the back. You can give me a def, who cares? You know how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Entonces, en consecuencia as a consequence. So, entonces, uh, some activity follows from that first thing you talked about. Mm. Some activity is a follow-up. That's what entonces has as a job. Por eso has, these are kind of similar in their job, in their function. Yeah. Uh, por eso, therefore. Or for that reason. Literally, por eso means Por is because of, and eso is that. Because of that. On account of that thing. Okay? Mi vecino es muy gordo. Es, es un hombre muy, muy, muy gordo. Por eso anda muy lentamente. On account of that, he walks pretty slowly because he's heavy. Así es. Okay? Por eso. Therefore, for that reason, literally because of that. Uh, again, uh, he gave us por lo tanto. We could put it in this group. We're, I'm going to want you next week to focus on these and bring examples. I give you something to hang on to. You had some. You could go back and like rewind. Listen for his examples, but here's here's some examples. And uh, so every time you see escribe, escribe tus ejemplos originales, this is where I want you to come up with some examples of your own, something that you make up. It may be shorter than this sentence. That is fine. Okay. Um, these are talk about these. Así que entonces por eso indicate some kind of a follow up. Mm -hmm naturally comes out of the first idea. Okay, that's the job of así que. No tenía efectivo, así que pagué la cuenta con mi tarjeta. I didn't have cash, so I paid the bill with my credit card. Paid the bill of the credit card is related to, uh oh nothing in my wallet. Yeah, okay, bien. See, this activity is a, a, a follow-up because of this situation up here. And the así que just tells you what happened, yeah, as a consequence, right? Uh, me, uh, entonces, mi esposo llegó a casa a las ocho, entonces <clears throat> se no muy tarde. It's late, so, then. so he ate late. Entonces is often translated as then. Yeah, it just means that this activity followed later. Okay? Bien? Vale. Yeah. Por eso. Mi carro no funcionó. Por eso tenía que llamar un taxi. My car didn't work. So I had to call a taxi. Bien? Yeah. Okay. So mis ejemplos. Those are my examples, but... That gives you something to work off of to see how that is used. And you can listen to his prior examples. Okay. Otros conectores. Otros conectores. Uh, aquí. Aquí tenemos conectores que se refieren al tiempo. Cuando. These all talk about a when. That whole thing you talk about, ordenar. Putting things in order. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, technically I wouldn't have included this, but it's like, oh yeah, I hear people say things like that. A, la, a los dos días. And that dos could be a tres, it could be a cinco, it could be any number. Okay. So that's why that's in parentheses. Uh, 
Es una manera de, de decir sí a two days later or two days afterwards. Okay. And I know a ah, means two, but well, yeah, it's just a, a, a bunch of words that hang together to give you that idea. Uh, a los dos días. Uh, uh, these are not in the video, but people specifically brought these up and actually these do connect another idea. So después de ordenar, that puts things in order. Yeah, después de, uh, after doing something. And that second part has to be infinitivo, see? ¿sí? Or the opposite of it, antes de, antes de, before doing something. Okay, bien? Okay, vale. Algunos ejemplos. Escribe tus ejemplos. Here's where I'm going to want you to come up with some ideas. Uh, pero estas ideas son las mías, ¿sí? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a los dos días. Uh, por ejemplo, mandé dos regalos por internet y a los dos días tuve un montón, un uh, momentito, un montón de correo basura en mi cuenta de email. Uh, I sent two gifts by email and two days later I got a ton of spam yeah mm -hmm. okay orden it's putting it in a time order right and that might be you know uh, a los dos días it could be a different number it, no importa uh, aunque would be another one si sí, es posible también uh, there are a whole bunch of different words that can function with this, okay? Uh, now, the, with después de, with después de and antes de, they're kind of some flexibles. They're a little bit flexible. You might switch the order of some of these clauses with these two phrases, you know? Well, you can't do that with all of these, but with these you can. Uh, después de infinitivo. Por ejemplo, descansé un día más después de montar en bici por uh, 25 millas. Yeah, I could flip the order, it means the same thing. Después de montar en bici por 25 millas, descansé un día más. I rested one day more. Okay? I, after, uh, uh, I, I rest one day, I rested one day more after bike riding for 25 miles. Conector. I connect another thing, but it's an ordered kind of thing. Antes de does the same thing, but it's the opposite meaning. It's a before idea. No podía comer antes de hacer ejercicio. I couldn't eat before exercising. Yeah. Uh, I could flip the order and it means the same thing. Those two phrases are flippable. Antes de hacer, uh, hacer ejercicio, no podía comer. Igual, okay? So, these talk really more about time-related ideas. These talk more about, like, something that occurs as a follow-up. You know, event number one happens, and this is a logical thing that happens after that first event, okay? Uh, I picked a few things. If you choose to try these, you can. You can use them, you can skip them, but uh, these are kind of fun here. Mejor dicho is like saying to put it another way or in other words. Literally, mejor dicho means better said. Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah, that makes sense, would ya? Yeah? En otras palabras, that's very literal. In other words, we say ex that exact same phrase, see? In other words. Uh, this OSEA thing is, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about OSEA next week. OSEA is also considered a, a kind of a crutch word. Uh, uh, it doesn't have a lot of meaning, but OSEA, I mean, <laughs> with a comma, I mean, <laughs> uh, or rather in other words. So these are kind of all grouped together because they're kind of used for similar reasons. Yeah. And OSEA is kind of notorious. 20-somethings in Mexico use OSEA all the time. It's kind of like valley girl talk. You know, like, 
like, like, like, o sea, is the like of Mexico. Oh, yeah. uh, there are people, even young people in Mexico who are like, ay, esta empresa. Uh, a fresa is somebody who's kind of like a, kind of like a valley girl talker. They're kind of, yeah. A uh, fresa is somebody who's really rich, kind of stuck up, only used to the best of everything. And they just yap constantly about this. Yeah. Okay. And amongst that group, it's like Osea gets worn out super fast. Okay. So try maybe a couple of those. So here are some examples of Mejor Dicho. Tom Brady era deportista excepcional. Mejor Dicho era el quarterback ideal de la historia. In other words, he was the best of all time. See? Uh, o sea, uh, mi jefe, o sea, el hombre que es dueño de la compañía, es un hombre muy razonable. Uh, my boss, uh, you know, I mean, I mean the guy who owns the company. O sea, just you're defining who mi jefe is, yeah? Bien, okay. Now, here's some other ones. I don't want you to practice all of these next week. I think in my explanation, it's going to say stop at slide after you're done with slide seven. But here are some other ones because you're never going to know them all right now. No es realistico. It's not realistic. But the hecho is in fact or as a matter of fact. Yeah, the hecho. De todas formas is like saying anyway. Por cierto is by the way, which has got nothing to do with true or false. <laughs> by the way, okay? it's used to, por cierto is used to change a subject and stick in an idea that, oh, I forgot. This isn't even related, but I forgot. I need to stick this in and then we can go back to the original conversation. Okay. Uh, and then he's got a bunch that are used for tying up things. And we'll talk about those next week. These are all conectores that uh, are used to kind of sum things up, to tying up in a neat bow, kind of towards the end of your conversation, to sum up. Yeah. Resulta que this one, super, super a lot. You're not going to practice it yet next week. Resulta que. Resultar is to result, to turn out. Uh, turns out that. Resulta que. Uh, al fin y al cabo. In the end. After all. Anyhow. That's al fin y al cabo. En fin, that one's probably pretty easy to understand because it's pretty close to what you think. Fin is an end, right? En fin is in short, all in all. Literally, it means in the end, okay? And you talk about that to sum things up. And these two things also to sum up. En suma, especially, yeah. Bien. So I give you a little list of the conectores he used there. Uh, Marilyn? Okay, sí, dime. Um, pregunta. When you use después de and antes de with the infinitive, are you talking about the third person after after eating, after whatever? Antes de comer? Antes de comer, that whatever uh, the, the verb. Ah, okay, be careful. It means after doing something. And the way to say that with antes de or después de is an infinitive. And oh, you, because it's ing that you're talking about. Yes. Uh, Descansé so un día más después de montar. I rested one day more after riding. Oh, I ah. see. Ah. Oh, por ejemplo, no podía comer antes de hacer ejercicio. I couldn't eat before exercising. It's an ing idea in English, but it winds up not being an ing in Spanish. 
it winds up being an infinitive. Okay. Ah. Otro ejemplo. And, uh, and, this, and, and it's about the person you're talking about. Uh, see, yeah, but notice you don't conjugate that verb. Yeah, you just don't. Any, this is a this is one of the rare one hundred percent rules. Ah, <laughs> if if you've got a verb form after a preposition like day, like ah, like en, like para, like por, it has to be an infinitive. It cannot be anything else. That is a blanket rule one hundred percent of the time. Okay, but there is a difference between después de que. Or antes de que? Oh, the K. Ah, cuidado, cuidado. So notice, uh, yeah, uh, it's after riding, not after he rode. I see. Mm. I see. I see. It's after exercising, not after I exercised. No, yeah. See, uh, game? after doing something. And that's why that ing is so important there. See, está bien? Uh, here, yeah, that doing is important. That's a big thing. We're gonna underline that. So uh, so can you give me the um, four or five um, things that throw it into ing? For example, day, uh, you know, that sort of thing as a, as a trigger for me that, wait a minute, Fred, this is not displaced. This is displaced day. You might hear displaced used by itself. Right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Si, can you, por ejemplo, me, me levanté. Si, esta mañana me levanté. Después fui al baño. This morning I got up and afterwards I went to the bathroom. Right. Right. But uh, fui al baño después de levantarme. I went to the bathroom after getting up. Mm. Fui al baño después de levantarme. Sí. Right. Uh, so, uh, so and, if perdón. Continue. So if, if day is is an alert button for me, is a trigger that wait a minute, this is that I you're using it as an ing. Don't right. And well, in in or, many cases, yeah. In or many would cases. be another one if it was hooked on. Uh, uh another example with después day or a different word that is not después. Another word that is not displaced. But another word uh, that won't ne more. necessarily translate to everything, but uh, okay. Um, para, para saber los ejen, uh, okay, so here I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example with para. Okay. It's going to be para an infinitive, just like that's displaced de with an infinitive. Okay. Para, para, uh, uh, para saber las noticias. Para saber las noticias, mm -hmm. hay que escuchar a uh, la tele. To know the news, you got to listen to the TV. Okay. But in English, I would not say to knowing the news. It's not a blanket that everything is going to be ing. For mm -hmm. these two words, for, for these two phrases, después de... Right. Yes, it's ing. Antes de, yes, it's ing. Antes de trabajar, before working. Antes de comer, before eating. Antes de hablar, before speaking. Ah, antes de hablar, piensa con cuidado. <laughs> sí. Right. Antes de comer, ah, lávate las manos. Antes de comer, lávate las manos. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's blanket for those two phrases. Okay, the ing. Does that make sense? 
-hmm. But does. not necessarily if I just plug in a para or plug in an N. Uh, it won't uh, necessarily be 100% blanket rule ing in right. these two examples. So have I, well, I was going to say, have I missed something? Obviously, I've missed something. <laughs> That's very clear. Uh, <laughs> besides hooking on day to such words as displace and antes and whatever, could I have a list of four or five of things that typically might throw it into an ING like para? And if when para is hooked on to mm, it's likely to throw it into an ING. When mm. it is hooked on mm. to displace and antes. No. No. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hook on an, an ING for any kind of prep, just any old preposition. Right. Just this. You gotta take the specific word combinations okay uh uh and they're all over the board and they're kind of yeah wouldn't you like to have a hundred percent blanket rule and there just never is i see yes. so it is um yeah you have to take the structure as it's given and just tell yourself that's the way it is it's a pattern i'm going to follow and it is an ing for that pattern. Right. But I can't blank it and say, anytime I see the word ah, anytime I see the word para, anytime mm -hmm. I see the word n, it'll always be an ing. No, it won't always be an ing. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. See? Okay. Bien. Uh, vale, bueno. Uh, entonces. Uh, you're gonna, and you know what? If if you can only get to the asique entonces por eso, and then just these time references, and that's all you got time for, call it good enough, good enough, yeah. Uh, if you can get a little further and do a couple of these examples with the mejor dicho no sea, great. And if you don't get to the mejor dicho no sea, no se preocupen, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Okay, vale, bien. So I give you a list of a bunch of the connectores he talked about. These are just used to hook on ideas, but what they mean is important. So don't press yourself to be able to use all of them off the cuff. Uh, you're gonna practice these ones that are uh, in bold in the first few sets so that you can take some very isolated examples and create an idea of your own. Okay, Malik? Logico, sí. es logico. Okay, sí. perfecto. Uh, I was hoping to get time to get to our little reading. Guys, no hay tiempo, lo siento. Um, uh, we can come back to this. Would you guys like to do some reading out loud? Aloud? Sí, bien, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's good um, for us, I think. Yeah. Yes. Let's maybe start off with this next next week as kind of a warm up because it doesn't really require you to insert your own idea <laughs> and and you know you just read the words some words are going to be hard uh and you know what if you just have time if we only we'll probably only uh uh read up until about oh like up around here this all trails thing that's probably all we'll get time to read next week but i do want to give people time to read because it's good pronunciation practice and and you can see it ahead of time so you can practice it at home and i would say just go practice that at home one more time Bien? um you know what that's going to be enough oh i was going to give you one homework i'm going to give you a shorter video you're going to get a short video this week and this is very tongue-in-cheek it is like super silly it is like so silly uh, how to be a real man. And I really love this because he opens it with complaining that there are too many women on this channel and they're, it, it's girl talk. I'm sick of this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to talk about some guy stuff. And so it's very tongue in cheek. He's not, please don't think he's serious about this. He's again, going to be silly. Uh, and really, this is only going to go uh, because, well, yeah, it's only going to go up to the six minute mark. And the rest of it is advertising because in January, everybody advertises their channel. So the last two minutes is straight advertising their paying, uh, their paid program, their premium channel that mm -hmm. people pay for. 
Bien. Um, so really, you're going to be want, listening to six minutes, and they're tiny snippets. Es muy fácil de entender. It's super, super easy to understand. Okay. Martín, sí? Sí. Todo mm -hmm. bien. We'll start with reading. Uh, we'll come back to if you have any questions about the real man video, and we'll do some conectores practice next week. Sí, vale bien? Sí. Todo sí. bien? Okay. Bien. Was that article about at a good level for you guys? Sí. Yeah. Fácil de entender, no? Sí. Uh, sí. This is something that people would typically, oh, I'll read about this. You know, hey, I'm thinking about starting an exercise program. And and yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, we, oui. a ver, sí. Uh, uh, I would love to take your questions on that, but we'll take any questions you had on it uh, next week after we do the, the practice. Sí, bien. Fantástico. Okay. Vale. Vale, vale, bueno. Okay. Uh, Si hay más temas, if there are any other topics, yeah, that you want me to do, please do let me know. Uh, eso es todo para hoy. Todo bien? Hasta luego. Hasta. Nos vemos.